On this week's Week with Video Fishing forecast, the fisherman's Jenny Ackerman has some great tackle information. If you're looking to target tuna, we have the latest upcoming events and tournaments. And for those of you targeting sharks on the beach, the DEC will be holding a meeting on the subject. We do have the details on that also, and our correspondents check in from around the island over here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I'm Captain Greg DeBrule of the party boat Blackhawk out of Niantic, Connecticut. You've seen us at the sports shows, you've seen us on TV, magazines, newspapers, now you can come fish with us, okay? We're fast, we're clean, and we're comfortable. And besides that, we catch them, ask around. Come visit us at BlackhawkSportFishing.com. We'll save a seat for you. I'm finally back from ICAST after many flight delays and cancellations. New Jersey, Delaware, and managing editor Jim Hutchinson and I will be bringing you a new video from ICAST highlighting the latest in fishing tackle and gear on Mondays and Thursdays starting today and going through the winter months. Another good reason to subscribe to our YouTube channels. So many innovations, so many new products. We can't wait to show them all to you. In this week's digital edition of the Fisherman Magazine, New England editor Dave Anderson has a great read on fishing items that you should keep in your vehicles at all times in case there's an unplanned fishing opportunity. Check out my article on strip baits or fluke and how they can improve your catch. And Bruce Witten has an informative read on targeting smallmouth in the winter months. All this and more in the current digital edition. A good reason to be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine is that you're automatically entered into the Dream Boat Contest and your chance to win a center console from Steigercraft powered by Yamaha. 30 bucks get to 12 of the glossy print issues and all the digital issues sent to your inbox. It's the best deal going out there on the water. Now let's get to the actual 2023 Dream Boat Challenge update with my friend Tim C. Smith. We had three new entries that made the leaderboard this week. A 2.05 pound porgy landed by Alan Beerman of Woodmere, New York, landing him in 10th place. A 2.55 pound porgy caught by Skylar Davis of Baldwin, New York, landing him in second place. The big fish of the week was a 10.8 pound doormat fluke entered by Glenn Obweiler of Aquabog, New York, landing him in fifth place for the category. The top three remains unchanged. Luke Citarelli holds third place with 18 points, Eddie Terrabile remains in second place with 21 points, and Bobby Cifarelli is our overall leader with 25 points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21-foot Steigercraft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. So far, it's been a good year for the tuna in the Northeast. And if you're new to fishing for these pelagics and want to get some tackle and lure recommendations, check out Jenny's segment this week. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. Today, we're at Fisherman's Supply in Point Pleasant Beach, and Jason is going to give us the tuna talk. Hey guys, it's Jason from Fisherman's Supply. We're going to go over the tuna talk here. Locally, the, the bluefin fishing has been pretty good and the yellowfin bites starting to materialize. A lot of anglers are targeting inshore lumps and ridges basically from Little Italy south to the Barnegat Ridge and all the way out to the Triple Rex. Go-to setups, uh, anglers are going with something similar to this. This is a 10,000 Stella paired up with a Game Type J 250 gram rod. Um, we have ours spooled up with 50 pound braid and 60 pound fluorocarbon leader. Uh, the jig of choice uh, has been the 120 gram streaker jig and uh, full glow pink. Uh, it seemed to have worked really well last year and transitioned over to be a good color this year. Anglers like this weight because it has a slower descent, so they are getting bites on the drop. And then they're also doing well throwing stick baits and poppers. Um, this is a, the new uh, Shimano OSHA Plugger Full Throttle paired up with the 14,000 Shimano Stella. We use 65 pound braid and an 80 pound fluoro bite tippet. Some popular lures to be thrown with this are the Mad Mantis Frostbite and the 170. And then when there's fish racing on the surface that seem to be picky, that are foraging on smaller bait, 
the uh, Hoagie Pro Tail in three ounce the pearl color seems to be a good one. And then what also anglers are also doing are throwing the Ron Z's. They, that could be casted and retrieved in slow, or you could fire this out, let it hit the bottom, stick the rod in the rod holder, and kind of let the boat do the work, and then jig while you're doing that. Uh, you know, letting this work. Aside from that, like I said, the bite is materializing. There's a ton of bait. Um, we're projecting a good fishery, so get out there and have fun. So many sharks along our south shore beaches anglers have been targeting them for catch and release but the dec has proposed new laws that will affect you if you are one of these anglers you can attend a virtual hearing on august 1st on this topic also a written comment period is open through august 7th for more information look for the link in the description below now let's get to the upcoming events on saturday is the grandpa saviano memorial fluke tournament and the balloons for sharks competition is still going through the month of july so far, over a thousand balloons have been taken out of our waters. Nice job, guys. On August 5th, we have the Great Gun Anglers Mauritius Fluke Tournament. On the same day, the Hempstead Lake State Park has a family fishing clinic. And if you like seafood, don't miss out on the Maritime Seafood Festival in Sayville on August 19th and 20th. I know I'll be there. And on the last weekend of August, once again, the Long Island Sound is the arena for the greatest bluefish fishing tournament with a grand prize of 25 grand. For all the details, visit thefisherman.com slash events. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Now let's go around the map to take a look at the recent reports. Keep in mind the awful weekend weather played a role in the fishing participation last weekend. Montauk fishing saw consistent action across the board on most species and stayed in line with the last week's report. I even got word of yellowfin coming as close as nine miles south of the point last week. Fluking saw good action both south of the point and near block with fish to nearly 10 pounds, while bluefish remained numerous once again with stripers right under them. Orgy fishing saw a low in its place though was the sea bass with some better catches to four pounds. Along the South Shore, during the last week, anglers scored with fluke inside Mauritius and Fire Island. A lot of keepers in the mix. Bluefish are still roaming Mauritius Bay while on the bottom. Kingfish and porgies are active on the north side of Great South Bay along the docks and piers. Plus the deeper holes on the south side and channels are holding them too. On the offshore scene, the 30 fathom curve has yielded non-stop yellowfin and bluefin action with big eyes at the deeper canyon like beaches when the weather is right to get out that far. West of that outside the reefs and pieces from 50 to 80 feet have seen some good summer flatty activity. Reports indicate that the cholera is holding larger fish compared to the other reefs. Bay action continues to hold up and flatties to 26 inches were decked. Top color scheme is pink in the gulp. Fish bites and spearing are helping anglers score as well. Further west near the city, party boats saw some keeper fluke that hit the double digit 10 pound mark fishing the ocean reefs. Along the North Shore, there were some shallow water fluke reports that popped up near the Smithtown area and a little west of that towards Huntington. In Port Jeff and Rocky Point areas, I got word of some small bass and bluefish keeping casters busy in the early mornings and evenings. Porgies set up well on most of the rock piles still, and the east end of, on the North Fork has seen some okay sea bass fishing, but finding a keeper has been tough. I also want to point out that there was an error in a correspondent segment last week. A giant bluefin is classified as 73 inches or greater, and the season for them is closed right now, and that means giants. Let's get to this weekend's weather forecast with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin, who scored with his first ever sheep's head last week. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast and see what we got going on. You can always check your favorite apps, weather tools, weather sites, whatever you got as we get closer. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend. So water temps certainly up. All the warm weather we've had, 70s, close to 80 now in Raritan Bay. Wave heights look okay for Saturday. I think we're going to be in good shape. General 2 to 4s, 4 to 8s, way offshore southeast towards uh, Block Canyon. But I think we're going to be better here as we go throughout Sunday. It looks like it settles down even more. Northwest breeze, light chop. I think we're in good shape. So, uh, again, future cast looks good Saturday. 
Saturday night, you know, Northwest Breeze, if this holds, this is going to be one of the best weekends we've seen in quite some time. A little onshore sea breeze in the afternoon, and Sunday looks good, too. You know, light breeze, north-northwest in the afternoon, onshore flow, but I think overall we're looking pretty good. High tides, north shore for the, uh, the mid-afternoon, south shore for uh, late morning, midday. 80s all weekend, Saturday and Sunday, but it's also comfortable. It's not that sticky, not that humid. A little different look at the Guru and, you know, also confirming Saturday, you know, a little light west-northwest, a little sea breeze in the afternoon, seas look good. And Sunday also looks pretty good, so pick your day, light northwest variable going south in the afternoon, light seas, and a very good-looking weekend. So I think finally, good one coming up. Get out and enjoy. Catch them up. Be safe as always. Matt, back to you. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Still have that summer doldrums fishing going on in between Shinnecock and Mariches. You know, some small bass in the lip, um, you know, either on small bucktails, paddle tails, uh, or even uh, quote-unquote live lining mole crabs, a.k.a. sand fleas, whatever you want to call them. And um, so that's going on. Tuna bite, the window, weather window opened up. My uh, buddy Sean Southern here with a 53-inch bluefin that he caught on the Loxy Lady out of, uh, well, it's the Port Washington crew, Manhasset Bay, Lip Rippers, uh, Rich Schiff and himself and a couple other guys. And they were south of Block, um, got it on the jig. So way to go, fellas. Hopefully I can get out there soon enough when uh, the next window uh, of weather opens up. And, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. We really like to get on some yellowfin or even a, a bluefin. Um, Fluke bite is still, you know, steady to improving. And, uh, you know, over the last weekend, the weather obviously wasn't that great. So, you know, a few bites were back in the bay, west of Ponquag Bridge. But, you know, that's that's been the weather's been getting better. So hopefully this weekend people can get on some, some doormat sea bass, same kind of thing. Uh, bunker pods primarily are just, you know, sharks, porpoises, and whales on them. Not too many uh, good-sized bass. But, you know, like I said, some of the small ones will be back in the bays, around the bridges, you can also try clam chum, clam bellies for them. So um, let us know how you do. Hopefully you'll get something this weekend, and I'll talk to you next week. Back to you, Matt. From Northport, we have the Cal Harbor Bait and Tackle Report. Hey, folks, well, I don't have to tell you, it's been a grind this past couple weeks, you know. The fishing remains really good. I'm thinking the bluefish and the bass, now the water's getting a little hotter, are going to start moving deeper because they're setting up on some jig bites, uh, anywhere between like 50 to 100 feet. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of fish, particularly sea bass as such, they're in that 50 to 65 range. Is it because the water temperatures are getting hotter? I'm not really sure. With all this weather we've had, you know there's a lot of low pressure systems coming through. Um, what you'll find many times is after the, these big thunderstorms come through, you'll get a slight bit of cooler air, get a higher um, pressure system, and it can really turn on the fish and that's when you get like this amazing top water action we've got tinker mackerel in the mix so that's really fantastic while we're seeing a general lack of adult bunker there's still peanut bunker in the back of the harbors and a lot of tinker mackerel filling in so we're seeing loads of those two to three pound uh, bluefish cocktail blues too and uh, they're great eating and the, the striped bass fishing remains pretty hot you're going to get porgies very easily. Remember, with the with all these fish, the larger fish chasing everything around, chum works fantastic if you're on the boat. Grab a clam chum and uh, and put it down in the water. It will really help your fishing game up a bit. You know, um, as far as fluke goes, fluke are really tricky to find. And depending on who you talk to, they're going to tell you the proof that it's been uh, poor fluking. But there's definitely some good fluke to be had. You just got to really pound it out and, uh, and and stick it out and try to figure out the pattern because the pattern is very erratic and it will be in short periods of time. I hope this really helps you out. Get out there, have fun. Remember, the weather's really hurting a lot of these local businesses. It doesn't matter. Bakeries, bars, delis, tackle shops, everything. Try to shop local if you can. Put that smile on your face. Make sure you get treated right, of course. We support each other, but... We want to be uh, very polite. And if folks are polite and they're doing the right thing for you, go back and uh, endorse that business and enjoy yourselves. And remember, always keep those memories alive. Until next week, I bid you all peace and tight lines. In three, two, one. Let's check in with Captree Bait Tackle and Fuel. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Captree beers are hopping right now. Blue claws, signs of snappers, and lots of fluke and blowfish. Uh, pure fluke up to four pounds, which is pretty awesome this time of year. 
Uh, Capture's Laura Lee said excellent fluke fishing on the primetime day trips, fluke up to six pounds. Ocean jigging trips, uh, the mornings are best. Anglers jigging gold, uh, doing really well. So uh, stop by the shop to find out what color for the day. Uh, sea bass up to three pounds and uh, some nice porgy action on the Expressions Ocean trips too. Uh, for the Jones Beach side of things, uh, we got a little facelift. You can see the shop here. Um, and uh, excellent reports, honestly, of Keeper Fluke. Um, outgoing tide, bait has been the key. If you're using gold, the bullfish and the sea bass, just attack it before it even reaches the, uh, the bottom floor. Um, there's not a lot of fish, but the ones that are here are big. So stop by the shop, you know, get some bait and uh, go out on the piers. Uh, small spearing moved in, so the uh, the new load of fish that I've been hearing about should stay for a while. So that's about it. But uh, get out there, have some fun, and back to you. From the Far Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Barnzetti. Hey, Matt. Uh, Fire Island report this week. Uh, fluke fishing primarily. That's what everybody's doing now. It's a little bit on the spotty side. One day is real good. The next day it's a little bit slow. You got to move around and kind of find where the body of fish is. Uh, live bait's been doing best. People fishing spot or peanut bunker. But I mean, you can catch on anything. It's just a matter of conditions and finding a little bunch of fish. So you got to work for it. It's not easy, but you got to kind of travel around. Heard a couple of reports from the uh, offshore reef, a couple of uh, sea bass, but mostly short fluke out there. I haven't heard of any real big ones, but inshore, a friend of mine had a 12.7 12 pound fluke inside. So uh, there are some big fish around. Looks like a nice weekend, and uh, I guess that's about it, Matt. We're going to see what happens. Hopefully the weather holds, and uh, get out there and catch them up. In three, two, one. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Whoa, Matt. Well, I'm out here on the beach. I got up early. I'm camping on the beach this week. Uh, so I said, you know what? I'm going to get out there, throw in the line into the surf. I catch something. It doesn't matter. I'm having a great time. The birds, it's amazing how many birds are out here. And they're dime bobbing me as I'm walking along. I guess they think I'm a threat. Uh, the fish don't think I'm a threat, but anyway, I, I'm having a great time. Now, as far as the fishing goes, we had a, a blessing and a curse this week. We had a lot of rain, um, and the problem with that is that it blew out all the rivers in Connecticut. It blew out a lot of the rivers in the Catskills, the Croton, but the blessing is Long Island, we needed rain for our spring creeks, and we got it, thank goodness. Hopefully we'll get more. Uh, we need to get these uh, water tables up. Uh, other than that, fishing has been good, but do it early in the morning. Or do what I'm doing, I'm switching over to the salt, or I'm switching over to uh, fishing for carp, or bass, or bluegills. But to be here on the surf, fishing fly rods, you can't beat it. Um, I'm having a good time, and that's what's important. So, listen, it's summer, but you don't have to sit around in the air conditioning. Get out there. It is really beautiful out here. So, to next week, tie lines, everybody. Let's check it with Chris Landry. Chris. Thanks, Matt. This Saturday, back by popular demand, is the Fishing the Atlantic High Rollers Charter and Tournament on Gypsy Charters. There's almost $10,000 worth of prizes. It's almost $5,000 uh, for the biggest fluke. It's $12.50 for the most keeper fluke. The first person to catch a keeper fluke gets a, a free charter on Rocksteady Charters for them and a guest. Uh, also for the biggest sea robin, Bernie's has supplied a Yeti cooler uh, and a Yeti tumbler. Um, I've never wanted to catch a sea robin so badly because I want to get that Yeti cooler. Uh, Bernie's has also supplied tsunami rods and reels for other uh, parts of the contest. Uh, it might be sold out. It's this Saturday, Gypsy Charters, Fishing the Atlantic. It's going to be good people on good times. As far as fishing, it's cobia season. Um, Timmy Margarita got a nice 50-pound cobia. 
uh, that puts him in the lead. Uh, so Wet Bandito was the self-proclaimed King of Kobe last year. Right now it's Margarita. Let's see who's crowned the king this year. I want to go for the title as well. My man Carl Newman from Brooklyn Anglers got a Kobe from the surf. So they're out there. We're getting a lot of these southern species into our waters right now. The temperatures are uh, it's almost 78 degrees out there. So it's a very exciting time. So get out there, stay safe, get tight, and back to you, Matt. Let's check in with David Rogers. Dave. Thank you, Matt. The action this past week in the Western Sound has been keeping anglers on their feet. The striper bite at night in deeper waters has been on fire. There has been multiple bass in the 50-pound range this past week alone. The key to finding these bigger bass was using bunker chunks in deeper waters and, of course, patience. I'm glad to see so many big fish hanging out in our waters at this stage in the season. Bluefish continue to hang out in the bays and are still dominating the daytime bite, taking Holy. bait and lures, especially topwater lures in shallow waters. Always be careful when unhooking a big blue. They are known for jumping all over the place, which can get dangerous real fast. Fluke fishing has seen an uptick in activity with more keeper fluke being pulled up and more anglers limiting out on fluke. The porgy bite in the sound is strong. There are big schools around, and you have a good shot at some jumbo porgies. Well, that's all I got for this week's report. And as always, guys, make sure to check out Funky Fishing on YouTube to get a more detailed look into what's biting around the island. Stay groovy, everyone. And back to you, Matt. Let's check in with Max Finch from the Connecticut side of the Western Sound. This past week, we seen fluke up to 10 and a half pounds by shop owner Rick Mola, so congrats. They fished a whole tide and had a two-man limit. The fluking's not the best, but there are fluke to be had. We've seen fish, you know, limits to like 23, 24 inches. You really gotta put in your time and pound these areas. Gulp, spearing, squid strips seem to work best. Places like Can 26, Can 24, and then going to the other side, Smithtown Bay and the OB buoy. Striped bass fishing remains consistent. The bass are in their summer mode, so live bait works really well early morning evenings and then into the nighttime. Our deeper water reefs like 11B and 28C are still holding plenty of fish. Guys anchoring up and chunking at night are finding nice fish and on the early morning bite. Sunrise bite around the island has been decent. It's been tapering off, you know, around 7 a.m. But throwing spooks, small plugs, uh, metal lip swimmers, stuff like SP minnows, rapalos, you name it. On the porgy side, porgies filled in everywhere. So places like Green's Ledge, 28C, Kakini Reef, and then guys from shore are also doing good, places like uh, Exit 18, Sherwood Island, and then the Nog Pier. And actually on the Nog Pier too, there's been a lot of dull bunker in our harbor, so it's bringing some bass in at night. We've seen some bass like 35 to 40 inches on uh, chunks on the pier at night. So thanks and good luck. Fishman Magazine has launched their apparel store. We got hats, sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts, all on sale now and free shipping for orders over a hundred bucks. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified when we post a new video on YouTube. And check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. And please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and their social media pages. Don't forget this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Podcasts. Search for the Fisherman Magazine Podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast and our other content. The weather looks good for the rest of the weekend. There might even be some offshore windows to make the run. Whether it's the back base for fluke, montau grips for stripers, or the deep for tuna, catch them up and have fun. We'll see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.